Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. We are continuing with our watercolor painting here. We are going to do the thistle I have decided just immediately right now. So in the previous video and at the bottom of this one I have posted a link of a picture of the thistle that I am going to be using. It is not the exact picture but my intentions are to kind of keep that around. I always work from actual photos, if not the actual item itself. And when you're doing hyper-realistic watercolors, it is extremely hard for your to do them and without in real life with your actual subject, especially if you're doing animals, unless it's a cat who is particularly lazy. I have one who likes to cuddle, one that is the bad cat. Uh, you'll hear him jingling around throughout many of my videos, I'm sure. Uh, neither one of them actually holds still long enough for me to do a hyper-detailed painting of either one of them. Um, one might be in my lap, or she might actually be on my painting itself, but, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, so I always try to use a lot of photos whenever I am getting to the meat of my paintings. So that way I can always have something to reference back to. And just like I said in my previous video, if you watched it, uh, it is, you, the human brain just cannot hold tons and tons of information. It's always better to use a photo, use something as a reference. You can always deviate from it. And you'll see the picture of the uh, thistle. It is quite deviated from what I'm doing here, but I want to make sure that I am doing the right colors, making sure that I have the, um, that I pretty much I'm doing everything appropriately. For instance, I just sketched this for my head and it ends up looking a lot more like a dandelion than the thistle that I see growing around here. Um, so when I looked up that picture that I put, put a link to at the bottom, I was rather kind of surprised at how far I was off, but you know, that's really the way it, it's always going to work. I've never sat around and studied a thistle. I've torn it apart before, but I've never really studied it. And it's been a long time since I've done that. So we are going to get, well, I guess I should say the brush that we're predominantly going to be using today, especially for something so small. Today is a round, round, whoop. Two. So that is going to be the guy that we're going to be able to do a humongous majority of the thistle. I may even, maybe at the end we'll see if I end up going in and putting in more details. And it'll probably be the paintbrush that we use for our little yellow finch as well. So to get started, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a nice light spring green. Been a long time since I've used this. It's going to take a little more water to get it worked up here. There we go. I'm just tapping it over here to make sure it's the consistency that I'm wanting. I want it a little bit more transparent than what I got in this tray here. So I could probably end up just using this whole thing. I'll flip it around here so you can see. There's my green I got going on. Filthy, filthy, dirty tray. There we go, that's a little bit better. And now I'm gonna take this kind of golden color beside my green. This is more than likely yellow ochre. There we go, dirty that green up just a little bit, make it feel like my thistle's a lot more dry as opposed to freshly grown and all nice and beautiful and springy. Probably end up there. Now this that I'm painting in, I'm going to pretty much cover the whole guy with this color. Uh, what I'm pa painting in at the moment is all the highlights, just giving them color. Um, you would predominantly do highlights as white, a lot of beginners I have seen. But really, I mean, unless it's shiny or you have, like, it's backlit and it's glinting off, you probably really aren't going to see that much white itself. We're going to save a lot of that white for in here. Picked 
up a little bit of my darker black color and I just might have to make some more green. Now I have, I'm sure there are people out there who might be watching this video, why did you use so much black and real artists don't use black and well to a point that is true. I very much agree with that statement, especially when it comes to acrylic painting and all kinds of other forms of painting. Now, I only use the black, especially in this case, it is a very muted green mixed in, so it is not just black. It's got a lot of green mixed into it, but I don't want it to be a bright green, I want it to be a nice dark green. Um, I don't need a brown, and I really want to make everything else in this picture really pop forward. So by adding black and almost adding a kind of grayishness to this painting, because black it, it muddies up colors, it gets them really gray and dirty and mutes them down so much. And for a background with no actual detail, I think that works absolutely beautifully. But that's just me. I got a little bit of my black mixed in there. That's okay. We'll live. Now, I'm not dipping over here and going over here because I'm not cleaning my brush and I'm not... Uh, I'm just rehydrating it so that way I can get the paint to move along the picture a little more. Do, 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 do. And marvelous. Now there's some places where I probably got a little bit to fill in, but because we got this nice, not necessarily solid, because there are highlights and lowlights in it, but with the almost like hooker green and black combination that I made, it won't take anything to scrub either what I already have down or mixing up. Oh, I got some leftover from yesterday. Just rehydrate that a little bit. Come back in. Yeah, water that down actually. There we go. And then just go back in and fill in in a couple spots and hooray. Get this guy moving a little bit more evenly. There. And you will have to kind of blend a little bit what you had before in with the new stuff, just so that way you don't have any harsh lines. But in those little tiny areas, that is okay. There is not a whole lot of work involved in that. There we go. All right, for the next part, let's see here. I'm just gonna go with this brown over here. Yeah, that'll work. And just kind of go in for those little detail areas. Oop, that's probably a little strong. We're just watering down. Now let's see here. Maybe some more of the green, hooker green, that I kind of used for the background. Maybe that'll help a little. Yeah. Nice, lovely, dirty color here. Now the way I am kind of thinking of this painting, the sun's kind of behind and off over here the way I planned to do this. So the underside of my leaves that I got going on, little accent, whee. Get some crinkly looking 
bits in there. The underside of my leaves is where I really intend to do a lot of my shadows and shading and I got that guy a little twisty. A little closer to the stem, I'll probably have the colors a little bit purer. And then I'm gonna lighten up the amount of pigment that I have on my brush itself. And sometimes when, when you accidentally put down too much pigment, the best thing to do is just kind of wipe your brush off. I just used my t-shirt, that's where my brush went. Wiped off the water, wiped off the pigment. So that way I can just use what water and pigment's already down here if I'm not particularly happy with what I got going. And there we go, that looks a lot better. Now, I'm not being too super detailed, all these really light areas that you're seeing, that is the green that we originally laid down. I'm just not covering the whole thing. And keep in mind, since I'm kind of got my light source in the back, way back there, the inside of the leaf is what's, well, in this one, the inside of the leaf is going to be where all the darkness is. I'm going to make that just a little bit darker. And then the outside is going to be the lighter area that you're going to be doing on that one. This one, I might have to actually research a picture of more light scenarios for a thistle to make sure that I am painting that correctly. Yeah, I thought I want some more brown going on inside there. Come on. Use my t-shirt again. Yay for black shirts. Never... <laughs> You ever develop this terrible habit that I have? Never ever wear white. Here I go. Mix up some more. Now, since the light source is on yonder, I'm probably going to have this one a lot more backlit, the way it's all opened up. So, there is my little vein that goes through the middle of the uh, leaf, like most things would actually have. And then I'm probably going to add a lot more water, so that way I got a lot more control and really kind of make it step by step getting lighter as it goes out towards the outside of these leaves. And if you are doing this and you don't really like how it's necessarily going for you, well, because we started light and working our way darker, it ain't gonna take anything to cover and fix and darken and darken and darken. While you can, on the other hand, do some things to uh, fix maybe what you currently have that may be too dark in some areas. You can always scrub it up like I was, I was saying earlier to move pigment around, make sure that there were no lines in there that I didn't want. Um, it is still just very, very hard, especially if you're working with a paper like I'm currently working with. This is a little bit of scrap that I had left over of some 140 pound. And I didn't think about it till after the fact. They're like, man, this, this color is just not laying like it normally does on the paper for me. Oh, that's why I got 140 poop. Oh well, can't change it now. Oh, I could, I could just stop working on it, and but that is not the way I roll. All right, now let's 
go from more of this nice dark brown color. And lift enough, come on guys. I'm only putting this brown really on this bottom part of the leaf here. There we go. Okay, now I think the next step, let's see, I'm gonna go and add a little bit more brown to this part. And a little bit back here. I always love mixing up in smaller doses and mix as I need. It might be pretty annoying to other people. I can, I can see that for sure. But you can always change up a little bit of what I am actually doing. It's more following along the lines of the advice that I'm giving, really. But, um... You can always kind of change up what I am doing in my videos a little bit. If you feel that you need to mix more paint at a time, go right ahead. That's that's okay. Just soften up a little bit what I just put down. Really just making this stem look like it has volume. And it really didn't do too much touching. And you're probably thinking, well, if the light's in the back, but it's above, then shouldn't this all be dark? Well, we're going to get to that. Because if you look at the uh, the photo that I provided in the link below, there is a texture underneath here. So I want to make sure that I get that texture in and don't accidentally cover it up. So, yeah, I'll have more green going on. And there we are. And the texture is kind of like these little stickers that are underneath. So it's just like a slight curving texture that I'm going to put. Now, there's gonna be very, very little areas that are going to have that old green that was a nice brighter green underneath. And then we can darken those areas up because they won't have the same light as like, you know, part of the stem down this way. But for now, we're just kind of putting them in so that way it doesn't feel like this is something that's perfectly smooth. And then we'll go in and shade it in just a little bit, give it some time to dry. And it is a pretty consistent texture. All right. Now I'm going to clean up this area a little bit because the stem is pretty wide at the top and uh, the uh, thistle itself has like a bit of a bell, or more of a vase shape. So I, by 
bringing this in a little bit and narrowing this down is going to help with the vase shape that I didn't originally paint in. So going back to the hooker green and black, just keep mixing up what I got here. Just smooth out some of those lines that I put in there so it's not too harsh. Blending, 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 blend, blend, blend. There we go. A little better. All right, now I'm just gonna work on this leaf a little bit more. Now that I've kind of thought about it, I think I know what I wanna do. Who knows, maybe I'll end up painting that leaf out. definition You can see I accidentally ended up covering up the end of this leaf. But if we go in and we act fast, we can recover and move that fresh pigment off since it did have a few moments to dry. Now we did lose that nice backlit area there, but I can show you how to get that back a little bit later. There we go. All right. Okay, now we can get to the really fun part, I feel. Now, as you may or may not be able to see, we really don't have a purple here, so that means we have to mix it. Now, I always prefer when painting to never buy what it is that I am intending to, you know, if I don't have purple, which actually this might actually be purple, or maybe it's just deep navy blue. Yeah, that's deep navy blue. Um, or it could be ultramarine blue. Um, I, you know, I don't have a purple in here. I don't go out and buy a purple. Otherwise, you are going to have this gigantic paint collection of absolute doom, and you're going to have a shoebox just full of these little little things of paint. Or if you paint bigger, really, you know, the great big tubes of paint. And that's just a pain in the butt. It's okay to mix. You learn so much more about colors uh, than you ever would buying it and playing with it yourself. So I'm gonna do a couple of experiments because it has been a long time since I've used this set to do a purple color. So I just grabbed some of my darker blue, which I do believe to be ultramarine. I do have an orange here and a red here. It's probably uh, crimson. 
I'm going to see what kind of purple I can get between the two. Now this is a really kind of light lavender color that we're shooting for here. And I might even pull out a test sheet. Yeah, I don't think that's really going to work so much. Might be one of those occasions where I actually use what little is left of my white in here. There's a couple of nuggets still scrubbable around. All right, I think that could possibly do. We'll get some more white going on in here. Yeah, that'll work. We can make that work. So if you're not using the same paint set that I am, I am just grabbing the white out of my kit and I mean you can use gouache. Um, I do have a tube of white acrylic that I use a whole lot, no particular reason between the two, it's just it was cheap at the time and that's what I went for. Um, a lot of people use gouache instead. So it's ultramarine and uh, crimson red. Put it together, it makes this nice wine kind of color. And then when I mix my white in, it pretty much gives me the lavender that I am wanting. So I'm going to start with one of the longer, taller spires. Because we can always go darker. which it's already about as dark as I'd ever want it to be. And I'm just going in and using just the tip of my brush, kind of outline those super tall spikes. tray on the other side so that way my arm actually has some place to go here. Now, this is kind of representing the middle and the spikes that would be coming at us as the viewer because those spikes that are coming at us are actually going to be the color of what's in here deep inside as opposed to the darker color that you see in the photo. that will be representing more the inside of our little thistle bush sound effects budget sound effects all right now it's more of this white worked up here play around a little bit more with what I got going on here. I'm going to try this blue over here with the red and see what kind of differences I end up getting now with my red, I mean. For those of you who've never really done that much painting before, 
Um, there is a difference between reds, blues that you end up using in painting. I believe this to be ultramarine and I believe this to be crimson. Now, there is a red that when you mix it with ultramarine will get a completely different purple than the other red. The other red being Azul, Azriel. I, I, I can never, I can never figure out really how to say it. Um, but it has an A and a Z in it, and it's the only red that I know of that does that. Azul red. Um, but between crimson and the azul red, mixing it with ultramarine, those two reds will give you two completely different purples from each other. And the same goes for the other blue that is available. You have ultramarine and then you have, um, oh, wish I had my chart. It's a blue that I very rarely use. Um, I'll put it in the description down below because I can't think of it and I don't want to waste your time. So you can see the difference between this deep wine red and it's not because there's more red than purple or blue in it. That That's just, you know, the color difference. Even if I did get more red to bring over to that purple, it is still going to be a little bit different than the other red. Let's see here. I think maybe I should go back to what I had just a minute ago. Yeah, okay. Let's see what that looks like with our white. Scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Okay. I want this pretty watered down. And I want this area to be really super bright. I don't want it to feel heavy at all compared to what we've already put down. And just do a couple of little test areas. Yeah, that'll work. And just filling in the rest of what I got going on here. Now that I'm getting over here, I'm probably going to leave those areas white for now. I could change my mind a little later. And when I mean later, I mean by the time I go and show you guys how to do the bird later. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to leave that as major highlights. computer needs to stop falling asleep on me. Okay. So I'm going to go back in with one of these more pure purples that have not been mixed with the white and just kind of, eh, maybe not that one. Just kind of water one of them down just a little bit and I might end up just using a lot of both because there's there's lots of colors in everything there's no such thing as something just because you have a pair of black jeans if you buy two different pairs of black jeans from two completely different companies and you wash them multiple times 
you know, get them kind of where they're almost fadey, you start seeing what other colors were mixed in with the dye. So you can get a really brownish colored black on one set. And then the other set might be a very bluish black when you compare the two together. In context, if you're out walking around and you don't have anything else black up next to those jeans that you, faded jeans you might be wearing, they just translate in your brain as black. But that goes along also with what I was saying in the last episode. That's just seeing. That's not, or that's just looking. That's not really seeing. Uh, somebody who's trying to train themselves to really see colors and really see what things are color-wise that it's not just white it's not just black it's not just anything there are lots and lots and lots of other colors that make up a lot of other things and sometimes you really you just got to go with artistic license and make it up but for instance the stem is not just green we mix browns in it and it's not necessarily a spring green because of all the two different greens that we use, the hooker and the uh, really light limey green. Um, along with the brown, it comes off as green. It doesn't come off as a naturally green like it started to. It looks a lot more cohesive and whole and a lot more realistic. And we didn't even use black for shading in all, any area. That's just the darker hooker green mixed with brown in order to give the illusion or the idea that yeah this side is the side where there's not that much light so I'm just going in here and dabbing giving some richer darker areas to this thistle clump at the top the flower part which I never really, I mean, you know, putting two and two together, it's like, you never really do until like you're really trying to pay attention to it. We always fed these guys on the farm. And they're always so much fun to watch and see. Now make sure that when you're dotting around, you don't just end up doing it in lines. You really want to scatter this out. Um, but you, you think, oh yeah, I'm feeding them. Yeah, these guys eat thistle seeds. I never made the connection that the thistle seeds that they ate translated into this plant before. And really, I never really quite realized until I got my own house, which is really stupid, stupid farm girl. I was a horse farmer. <laughs> um, well, that's not a farmer, that's just horse person, but um, it would be a ranch at that point. And my uncle, he, he, he farmed. The actual land itself, though. But, uh, anyway. I never really realized that this particular flowering plant that I always saw out in the fields was that little squat thing that always came out of the thistle seeds that they ate. Because I've only ever seen them, like, yay big before. And I, my brain never translated, oh, those are the exact same thing. It's just they would never got bigger than that tall with, you know, a base bigger than this painting. Because all the leaves just coming out and all those leaves were so huge compared to these little tiny things on top. I don't know. It interests me. Things that apparently I am just not paying attention to, I guess. Alright. Get a little richer here, so that way I can just put a little bit of that pure color in here. Kind of gives the illusion that it's kind of brighter in a way because it's got a lot more true pigment, thicker pigment going on. I'm putting little short long bits because Again, the whole how much information the human brain can kind of hold kind of thing. Um, by putting slightly longer bits in here, it ends up translating as the deep in the middle of this flower, the um, shadowing for our longer pieces that we got going on. All 
All right. Pretty satisfied with that guy there. Since this part's like a puff ball, we really don't have to be too terribly detailed with him. All right, now for the next bit. Scrub, 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 scrub. Give this guy more of the shape that I would need. So this will teach you, do your homework first, and then it'll save you more work later on. Being the idiot I am, I know what a thistle plant looks like. I'm, apparently I don't. Do my research. Now all I'm doing is just lifting and moving the pigment around a little bit more so that way I can try to give it more of that vasey shape. That bell at the bottom here. I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit, otherwise I'm pretty happy with where it's going at the moment. Move this all down out of my way. Alright, there we go. And I could leave it kind of like this where there's just these little bits here to kind of give the uh, idea that this is not smooth, that there is some sort of texture going on. And there are times when this is all the detail the brain needs to completely fill in because they're getting kind of like, you know, the average person, oh, I know what a, what a thistle plant looks like. And just giving these few little light spots is like completely, the human brain will just fill in yeah, the texture, yeah, that, that would be right. It's pretty interesting. And especially if you go and look at like the old masters and really old uh, portraits and you'll see lace in those pictures and you think that is the most awesome, the most detailed. Oh my God, who would have sat there and drew that lace that perfectly for how long would that take? And then you go up and you really get close and you really look at it right on top of it, all of a sudden you realize it's a, sh well, what most people would call a shorthand that the artist developed where maybe it's just this spiraling thing over and over again that he just did for the whole thing. And all of a sudden, wow, hey, that, okay, I was fooled. I love that, that kind of thing. Shorthand is pretty amazing. I always thought, okay, now I gotta draw each individual little spike on this plant and each little... No. You don't need to necessarily put yourself through all that work. Shorthand is a pretty amazing little thing. And because of all the... what I did over there, I'm just putting in a few textures little areas where that are a little darker, maybe a little lighter to kind of bring that illusion of that over into here. That it is not even, that it's at least got something going on there. It may not come off necessarily as uh, the thorns and thistles getting on it, but it'll do. Get some more of that nice yellow ochre and that bright limey green in here. Right. I'm gonna let 
let this dry a little bit before I play with it anymore. Sometimes you gotta realize when enough is enough, come back to it in a minute. And that's really one of the best things you can ever do for your paintings. Just give it a breather. Sometimes it gets sick of you as much as you get sick of it. It's just smoothing out some of these areas. And put my line in here a bit. I never fall into the idea that, okay, well, there's, you know, a bit of stem between these two, so straight line. Now, nah, never really put a straight line in there, otherwise you're going to get something that looks a little kiddish uh, going on. Never feels as organic and flowy. water down some of this purple I got going on over here nice and thin oh grumpy dog Whenever I end up getting colors mixed in that maybe, you know, like I'm getting some of this background color kind of mixed in with my flower at the moment, I don't really fret about that so much because, I mean, this is such a minor thing, but kind of going along with where a lot of people say, oh, don't, don't put black in your painting because it always looks unnatural, which is true, I feel, uh, up to a point, obviously. Um, but at the same time to keep it from feeling as unnatural, bringing some of it in and just have, and just letting a little touch of it mix in, in certain places because you don't, the flower on anything is not going to be perfect. Um, it is going to be, you're going to have some brown bits, you're going to have bugs eating it, this, that, or the other, you never know what and bugs are always going to get up to. So I don't mind a little bit getting mixed in. Um, especially since now it's added a lot of shading to the bottom. And then with the white we left alone up here at the top. Really kind of makes it a lot more cohesive. Now a lot of these areas that I left. I kind of left as places where I was going to put the, uh, the nice spiky bits of this flower all over the place. Well, I didn't need to go all the way out here, and I probably made some of those areas just quite a bit too big. So now I could go in and paint them uh, the background color and get rid of some of these guys, or just like add adding accents. Like for instance here, I know that purple's not come all the way down this way, so I'll go in and paint some of the darker areas. Just kind of invert it a little bit. Oh, whoop, that was his tail feather, wrong one. Yeah, that's okay. That is gonna be black because he's black. Boom, the bird's got black on him. Let me mix up some more background here.
And don't forget to blend in your areas, the lines between your areas. Uh, so that way it doesn't just look like, hmm, looks like they painted over something. Something else used to be there. Now that part is his tail feather and I accidentally painted in his other tail feather but it's going to be a little bit darker than that so we'll just leave those alone for now. That's for the next video. I do plan for this to be a three-parter. Alright, well actually I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm probably just going to add a little bit more uh, texture in here. Now I am taking a the uh, yellow ochre and the uh, spring green here and just making some spiky bits. While it's not going to come off crystal clear or anything, uh, you will see the paint itself kind of laying on top, which will add, help add to the illusion uh, that we're creating. And it's something you really only see when it's dry. Okay. Alright, well, I'm going to stop the video right there. We're looking pretty good. Please like, subscribe, share, leave comments down below of what you would like to see, techniques that you would like shown. Maybe you're needing help with ripples in water or doing actual water with watercolors. Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from anybody and I will make an entire art class just for you. That's why it's art my way. It's art the way the viewer would love to see it or needs help with. I love helping people. And I thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.